to get that toner off, you work with lacquer thinner. And so with lacquer thinner, you want to have plenty of ventilation going. A fan, um, go outside, uh, whatever you can do, but don't breathe the stuff. It'll rot your brain and make you paranoid. Clean it out real well. Uh, soft, stiff brush. Try not to scratch the plate very much, but we can always remove scratches with the burnisher later on. At this stage, there's a product you can use rubbing compound for automobile paint finishing product. And there's one for printmakers called Putz Pomade. But if you can polish your plate with this stuff, and uh, you'll begin to see how the image really looks without that black background on it. In my workshop, I have a buffing wheel. So if I want to, I can really put a high polish on this before I go to the next step, which is to use some dry point. Now you can see what it would look like if you ink it. And I like to etch the plate very lightly with the photo images on it because I'm not that crazy about simply reproducing a photograph. But the photograph, as I said, gives me a start when it's a person. I'm not that great at portraiture. And uh, it also gives you the basis for your soft ground, which is coming. Now what I've done is I've spread ink into it, and this is tarlatan fabric. It's a stiff uh, cheesecloth-like material, so it, it doesn't soak up the oils of the ink, it, but it, um, it traps the excess ink and distributes it. I learned this method from one of the people that bought my press. She showed me to do this. It's a slow process. And I'm not going to print this yet. I'm going to print it when I really don't know what it looks like after I do some dry point. After so much of this tarlatan, you can uh, bring it up even brighter with telephone book pages. That's going to give you the most contrast. A dry point, the term simply means there's no liquids involved. There's no, no mordants, no ferric chloride, no acids, and so forth. It used to be a touch-up technique in the old, old days when they would do an etching or an engraving, and they saw some places that needed to be changed. They didn't go back and bother with all the etching. They'd just take a needle to it and fix it. I think that's the story, the history of dry point. Remember, printmaking was always a reproduction process and until modern art came along. Now, what's bothered me about this print for a long this uh, image has been this area here, which is all shadow. He's wearing a hat. A friend is wearing a hat, and uh, the hat is making this shadow all over here. And since it was solid um, in the laser print, it was completely protected. And I would normally, if I were doing a straight etching, I would use a aqua tint in this area and make it rough so that it trapped ink nicely. But I'm going to stick with dry point because I feel like it. After you've made some scratches with this, I'm using a what they call a Whistler style etching needle. Sometimes it's called a scribe. And you'll be, from here on out, you're going to be using a, a scribe like this, an etching needle, uh, sometimes it's what's called a scraper, and another one called a burnisher. But first, before I can sort of look at this thing, I wanted to get these areas that are supposed to be dark, make them dark. Now, I might be making them too dark. I don't know yet until I rub ink into it and wipe them off again. And this is where the real... I think the real creative process starts is when you are working back into the image, the camera image, the photo image. Now if I rub ink into it and wipe it off again, it's 
looking more like it's supposed to, like there's a, a shadow under his hat. The use of the dry point makes the texture of the picture look entirely different. So there's going to be a lot of needlework, a lot of dry point from here on out, where I'll be going back over and trying to create some harmony between the handmade lines and the camera lines. At some point, the dry point and your your drawing takes over and uh, you know practically eliminates the photo image. But that's just a, that's an artistic process, and uh, there's really not much more I can say about that. Now I like to sit down and focus more and use the other tools like the burnisher and the scraper primarily. You think of these as being sort of like erasers and of course the needle is more like the drawing tool. When you do dry point it's really just a little burr that you're throwing up with the needle. The needle throws up a burr like a, like a plow going through the field, throwing up a furrow. And it's the burr that actually catches the ink and it gives dry point that typical kind of soft look people talk about. And the opposite of that is the scraper, which takes off the burr, but it leaves that little fine line. So you're building up a kind of a web work of lines and burrs. This, the burnisher is similar. It flattens the burr out, polishes the plate. So if you have highlights in the image, the burnisher brings out those highlights even more. There's a technique called mesotent, which uses exclusively the burnisher whole set of different burnishers and a plate that's a complete web of burrs. Oh, I picked up the scraper by accident and uh, I was going to pick up the needle but I should mention too that the tip of the scraper is needle sharp and so it can be a drawing tool tool. My goal is to basically eliminate the photograph and replace it with my own drawing. It would help if I had the person here sitting as a portrait and then I'd have a little more feeling for the real individual or I could have a photograph sitting in front of me and kind of guide my, my decisions. But the etched in uh, image in the background is an uh, interesting way to start. might not be for everybody, but my point of this video is to show one approach. And, as I showed before, periodically you can put some ink back in there and check your progress, see what kind of changes are happening. It's still too soon to take a print. I think it probably, at this point, looks pretty awful. It's going to be a contest between the original image the photograph, and out there somewhere in the world is a photographer who's probably incensed that I would use her or his photograph this way, but that's all I have to go on right now. This is not for publication not without permission from the artist, the photographer behind that original image. This is called the hand wipe. We use that in printing mesotents quite often for uh, dry points and mesotents quite often. The hand is the really nice tool for wiping the plate. You can see the softness in the image. Up in here you can see the soft lines. It's just sort of shadowy. I'm getting curious about what this will look like as a print, so 
it's a feeling you get. You think, gosh, I wonder, maybe there's a, a nice print in there. Do you think? The other side I haven't touched. And so we get a good idea as to how one of these photo etchings look without any dry point. Pretty light, but shows me where I am on this plate. Shows me I've got a lot more work to do if I were to continue. But this is just a little teaching video to get somebody started, and I'm not going to take this any further. I think you get the point. Thanks for watching. I'm Bill Ritchie.